Well, I think one of the ways to look at this constructively is to see the use of the roles themselves as a crescendo. So that if I have a resistant employee who may be causing trouble in some way or another, I'm going to sit down with them and I'm going to have a nurture companion conversation with them. I'm going to find out, you know, do they need, are they resistant because they need additional training? Um, or is there conflict, uh, among team members that's causing them to have a block? Is there something going on in their life personally that, that is causing them to be a little more negligent than useful than usual? Um, and you know, if we move forward and the person still isn't, um, shifting, then I'm going to have a sentinel conversation with them. And the sentinel is the part of you that steps back and watches group dynamics in relation to threats and opportunities in the environment. And so when we see a shepherd guarding his flock, the the shepherd's engaged in the sentinel role. Um, But when you have a sentinel conversation with a person, you're going to talk to them about how their behavior is affecting their team and the team's effectiveness and how that's affecting the mission you know, the, the company goals and how that affects company's ability to serve the customer. You can just have a really straightforward conversation about that. And if that's not working, I, I crescendo up to the leader role. I have a conversation about, you know, what is really the mission and vision of this company and how does their role work or how does their job fit into the mission and vision and why is that important? And then also, what are opportunities for promotion in the Sure. If this person can move through this initial difficulty, if the leader isn't working, then I go to the dominant and the dominant gets more directive and says, okay, you've had this many opportunities to shift. Clearly, I have to push you out of your comfort zone here. Um, So if I don't see this report by this date, this will be the consequence. And then you crescendo up through the dominant role by giving the consequence. And I usually give them one more consequence that's more intense And then the last thing the dominant does is let them know the predator is coming in next. And so if the person has gone through all these steps and they are not changing their behavior, then they come into my office and I say, you know why you're here, don't you? It's time for you to leave. You're obviously not a good match for this company. And I already told you this was going to happen. So I don't have to raise my voice. I don't have to shame the person. I don't have to feel guilty or conflicted about it. It's just clear this was about to happen and there were many chances before for this person to get on track wow that is powerful and really really helpful thank you so much linda i wish we had more time um everyone can go to your website though masterherder.com the name of the book is the five roles of a master herder a revolutionary model for socially intelligent leadership, which is what we need. We need more social intelligence in this time, in this world right now. Thank you so much for being with us today, Linda. Thank you, Marie. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Well, it's time to go now. So I really thank Linda for spending time with us and thank you for being with us this hour. I hope this has served you well. Be well. Namaste.